All right. The Ghost Wolves, welcome to tonight's show. Brought to you by Music First Hand. I'm Chris Petrafka, your host and CEO of Music First Hand. We're doing this weekly. We are bringing you uh, the best talent in Austin. And I'm super excited tonight to have the Ghost Wolves. Our currency to keep this going is all of you. So please like and share. Uh, we're all volunteering to bring you the best talent in Austin, Texas. And so please like and share this. If you're on tonight, send us some questions. Send us the most ridiculous questions you can. I'll ask them. These are the ghost wolves. They like ridiculous questions, okay? So send us those in. Uh, we've got a great team in here. They're going to be sending those questions to me. Um, and please, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm also proud to say we've got Cuvée Coffee sponsoring us for a second week. I've had so many black and blues today. The front yard looks like literally a, a frat party the next morning. I've had so many cans of black and blue, and that's why I'm pumped. I'm also excited because you don't show up to the ghost school. It's not excited, all right? If you've seen them live, you know the kind of energy they bring. So... With no further ado, please let me welcome to you the Ghost Wolves. Woo woo woo! Yeah! yeah. Hey! Hey, welcome. Hey, Mom. All right. <laughs> Yeah. 
Anyway. Yeah, so you go, yeah, so you go to Japan, and then you're in Japan, you can't understand anything, you're just totally confused the whole time, but then you're this, like, thing from yeah. another planet, and everyone wants to hang out and watch a show. Yeah. So, yeah, you mean... You have no idea what you're eating. Uh, yeah, you don't know what you're eating. What I got sick, and we were just, you know, we were in Tokyo, and I was, like, in the hotel room, just, uh, like, keeled cool. over. And before you had to play, after. You had to play like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It was really sketchy. Yeah, yeah so everywhere is great, but it's all variable. It's like, and you do know, like, it's just known that when things go bad with your band, the drummer's the first to go. It's always a drummer. Yeah. So make sure, you know, it's always a drummer. That's why I don't play drums. That's good. Um, and then, so if you had to go back to a few places here, here in the States, uh, who would you give a shout out to? So you're going to get yeah. So our homies in Northeast Wisconsin, Mantua. Yeah, Green Bay, love you. I love you here. I'd like to say, uh, give a shout out to the um, Codfish Hollow mm. in Iowa. Yeah, um, Coconut. Yeah, Coconut, Iowa. They, that's a great venue. There's so much fun when we go there. Yeah, it's an old barn. People are oh, cool. It's really so cool. nice and hospitable. And, they massage the kale before you get there. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. I didn't even massage kale. Oh, yeah. Try it. Try okay. it on It's the way to eat it. Okay. It's the only way. Yeah. Now. My wife made dinner for us tonight after the show. Right. She massaged the kale. <laughs> it smelled good. I, it smelled really good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And so you, you guys play a lot. I mean, you're, you guys are intense. So I, I, I love it. Um, which is I, almost my kind of music, but and I grew up a big Black Flag fan. I knew you, you know, yeah. again, right? So, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, huge fan. Cool. But you also can be intimidating to people who may want to come up on stage and book you guys for shows, right? It's just you're on stage, it's really intense, it's a different sort of personality, right? It is. So what's your advice to them, and how do they get in touch with you? Do they go through a, a booker? Do you guys have lots of agents and people to get through? No, um, you can email us directly. You can email me, uh, you can call my hotline. <laughs> So, 203 858 1630 is really my number. If you want to call me and book me for a gig, I will come play. Why don't you just email me? Your bar mitzvah. Info <laughs> at the ghost I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I can always block people, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, sure. I, I that's why you answer my call. Yeah. 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 Y
you've got an open spot or mm-hmm. you've got time in the afternoon, mm-hmm. people can book you. Mm-hmm. We've yes. done that for a private show. Like, yeah. you know what, we see there in town tonight, let's have them in our backyard this afternoon. And fans love to get that kind of phone call. Totally. Hell yeah. Absolutely. It's a good we will 100% call. return that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think that's key for a lot of folks to understand. And then is the plan, though, for you guys to stay DIY? Are you looking to sign? Or what's what's the plan? Well, we have, I mean, when we say DIY, it means that we're like day to day is all you know, us. But we have help. Like, we're on a couple of small labels. We're on a label from Germany. We're on a label from Indiana. We have deals with people that help us do things. And we have a great agent in Germany, Mary. And uh, we we have help. But it's yeah. it's small you know, yes. entities that we're also small entities, so we yeah. understand each other. We haven't had much experience with big companies yet, and I mean, not that we wouldn't rule it out, but we're happy with what we're doing right now too. Yeah. You know, but there's a lot of room to grow. Yeah. Yes. We'd be happy to be one hit wonders. <laughs> one hit wonders. Yeah. <laughs> I just do the one hit wonder. Yeah. Ten years, and then there's your one hit, and then everyone's like, "Well, where'd they come from? They just came out of nowhere." Where'd they go? I don't know. Well, it's been out for ten years, but. Yeah, what happened to the ghost wolves? Yeah. <laughs> and Tori is tough. They're on their yacht. Yes. <laughs> That's what happened to them. Yeah, they're so punk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe the haters or, yeah, they'll yeah. throw against you. Uh, you know, you sell, sell out in the yacht. Uh, Money my problems. Mm. When you're touring, though, um, how, how do you, it's tough because you're, you're a lot of time in the van. There's, it's low on money, right? You don't make a ton of money at, at any of these shows. It's really tough, right, mm-hmm. to, because, to get to that level. So, um how would you guys approach sponsorships? Um, if you were to have sponsorships on your tour, how would people, you know, how does that happen? Um, well, it would have to be from companies that we like, you know, for, like, we're not going to let, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't mm-hmm. let someone, like, a fast food company sponsor us. We don't like fast food. We don't eat fast food. But yeah. we've, you know. we've talked about it before because we have this big van, and we, we basically go to every Whole Foods in, in every town. We call oh, it the yeah. Whole Foods Tour because... That's the cheapest way you can go eat like healthy it. food without yeah. having to like pay service and tip and all that. So it's just uh, we could get our van wrapped by Whole Foods. We are from Austin. There you go. So like if anybody wants to make that happen, we'd be happy to drive that around. I well, she it. has a, good, she has a guitar <laughs> sponsorship from Silvertone Guitars. Yeah. Okay. So she plays the Silvertone. It's perfect. You know? yeah, yeah, they get, yeah, they give me guitars and I play them. And oh. You know, I get the word out. Everyone's constantly asking me about guitars. And I also have a pedal sponsorship. Oh, okay. Um, Earthquake Devices. They, they're out of Ohio. They make okay. awesome pedals. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. Let's give a shout out to them online, Maddie. Mm-hmm. Earthquake. Yeah. Earthquake. Earthquake Devices. I got a nice sponsorship from uh, whoever Cutco. makes Cutco. <laughs> Cutco, nice. <laughs> uh, you know, the Cuve Coffee, right? We, we, mm. and, and I know coffee's hard to come by, yeah. too. Yeah, well, that would be a great sponsorship because he has to drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. Say alert on the road. We do, yeah. I mean, we drive a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of miles. So it's a lot of coffee. It could be like sponsoring your, like, your safety and your health. That's right. Exactly. But yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we'll have to talk to Cuba Coffee about donating a few, a few cold brews because let me tell you, I'm not sleeping the next two days. <laughs> <in the> afternoon, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> So let's, um, I know folks on, on, that have tuned in online um, who may want to watch later too or want to see you guys perform. And especially a lot of people haven't seen you perform with these instruments, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of new for us. The gut bucket set. The gut bucket set. I love it. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> let, let's hear a song or two and then okay. I'll come back and answer some more questions. Cool. <laughs>
one more. I got plenty of questions, but you want to see us? Yeah, let's let's sing this. Let's just jump on the line. Oh, really? Yeah, so that was pretty cool. And, um, so you just walked up in a flea market and we're like, that's about it. Well, we played with that band the night before and the bass player was like, hey, I work at this flea market. If you have time tomorrow, come check it out. So we went there and it was a very strange, huge building with booth after booth after booth of what looks like just, I mean, junk. Mm. <laughs> just, like, it wasn't even priced. It was just like thrown in. A flea market. Well, worse. Worse. worse, yeah, it, very strange place, yeah, like a junkyard okay. type of place, yeah. nothing was surprised, it was wow. all in disarray, we were just like, wow, this is strange, you know, yeah, we were cool. walking all around, it was like three stories, and Johnny's like, Carly, come here, and I'm like way down the aisle, and I'm like, what, and he's like, come look at this booth, and then there it was, and it was about six different, and they were all Whoa. completely different, but they were all cigar box, a couple of them had three strings, Several of them didn't plug in. They had like a built-in speaker, okay. and um, like, they were all just beautiful. Oh, they were wow. really cool. And we went and we were trying them all out and plugged them in and stuff. And then we went and talked to our friend who they had played with the yeah. night before. It's like, oh yeah, I'll let you tell Sam. Yeah, yeah, let me give him a call. <laughs> Called him. Hey, our friends are in. You know, they're on tour. They're in from Austin. Yeah. They really like this. Your cigar box. Like, is there anything? do like cool. give him a discount and he was like oh yeah okay sure wow so they hooked it up and we just fell in love with it it's just it's so light it's so easy to carry around and we just started playing it in the van it's really easy playing the band that's great you um, just picture you at the end of the aisle like i found it <laughs> yeah it was, yes. it was a great moment it was like a treasure hunt yeah you know, but you know we found the treasure all junk and we found that oh cool <laughs> yeah yeah really we're cool. forever and forever thankful to Wichita Sam Thank Thank shout out to Wichita Sam. Sam. Wichita Sam. I wonder if you can tag Wichita Sam because I bet he's out there. Let's yeah, he's out there somewhere. Come on, Wichita. We it. Yeah. We didn't get to meet him, but, but I'd like there. to. Well, yeah, Maddie will find Wichita Sam. I know it. <laughs> she's she's good. Uh, and then the washboard. Yeah, this is a washboard. This is how people used to wash their clothes, or maybe they still do some places. I don't know. <laughs> and I, uh, you use that with the, I saw the clothes in the van. With the picture, yeah, you know, if we get desperate on the road, I could probably wash my underwear. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, never use that. 
that desperate. And I mean, yeah. I always, always take a lot of underwear with you whenever you go And then there's the like <laughs> underwear all over the van. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Put your underwear in a bag. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like a house on like a living <laughs> micro level. Yeah, oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is. See, like, so my wife doesn't notice. I can just like tuck underwear in different spots. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. Your house yeah. is bigger than our man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the washboard. Oh uh, yeah, the washboard. So uh, this is probably what my great grandmother used to wash with. Uh, it probably came from her house. I think it's been in the family for some years now. And uh, so this is a broken tambourine, which sounds kind of rattly, or maybe it's some decorative bells. I don't really know. I think it's a reindeer. These are my butter knives. Uh, you can eat with these if you get. If you need to, <laughs> and uh, this is butter. the whole point of this is this is my anti <laughs> this is my anti drum instrument because uh, I've been playing drums for 15 years or so, and uh, my mom always wanted me to play a washboard, so that's nice. I think it's great. Thank I you. love the washboard, and it sounds. I mean, we weren't sure what to expect. We know that you were going to show up, and this is good. Somebody wants to do a house show, right? We were like, you know, how does this work? The ghost wolves. We're going to have them in here, and my wife's like, we're having them. The ghost who? What? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It's cool. They're super friendly. They're good. Don't worry. Not the dog's going to be fine. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, yeah, we might do like an acoustic type set. Yeah. I was like, oh, this should be interesting. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the complete opposite of our other set. And you guys have a show coming up too that you guys are doing the, with part of your the gut bucket. We do. Yes. We, we have our electric show tomorrow night at the Black Heart on mm -hmm. Friday night. And then Saturday right. night, we're doing a gut bucket at radio. So it's just two completely different Yeah, radio, coffee, radio, radio coffee, 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 beer. coffee, beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and with Gladys and Maybell, who, um, they do traditional Americana. Oh, old, that's super cool. Um, American music. Like 1940s. Yeah, oh, cool. awesome um, harmonies. And really? Yeah, Almost like sister. Excited. Are they sisters? They're sisters. Sisters, yes. Oh, yeah. Sister harmonies. Man. Yeah. Let's get them on here. You, oh, yeah. Shout you got out, you. Maddie. Yeah. Okay. Gladys, Gladys. Gladys and Maybell. Uh, G-L-A-D-Y-S. <laughs> It's a hard one. And Mayville. Yeah. And Mayville. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that, I mean, I did Black Heart right here on Rainy Street, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so people can check that out. Um, so the name of the Ghost Wolves, um, I know a lot of, there, there's a lot of, a lot of great band names, but that is a pretty, pretty badass band name. And, and it wasn't like you guys sat around, like on a whiteboard, like a bunch of corporate folk and said, what would be the most coolest band name? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, you know. Well, not necessarily, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, the story that I read or heard was that, you guys um, went out for like just a nice lovely day, like just a, a picnic in the afternoon and, and a storm came in, it got really, really nasty. You guys got just turned around in the woods and were just completely lost and a storm came in and it was just, it became hellish, like nightmare stuff, right? And you guys were lost and disoriented for a while. This is what I read, I don't know if it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and as you guys got lost and totally disoriented, um, it, it, it appeared to you. And could you tell us this story that has just, um, sounds amazing. Well, it was sort of like that, but <laughs> <Not fun? laughs> that, that was like one of those through the grapevine things, you know, where it sort of changes uh, every yeah, it's the telephone. Telephone. Uh, it's close, it's close. But you weren't far off. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, same sort of thing. But uh, this was right when we were forming our band. Our mm -hmm. Arctic um, wolf dog of fifteen years passed away. Mm -hmm. He was our um, our family's pet, as well as the, the pack leader, the alpha male. Mm -hmm. So we were devastated, and um, we were all gathered at my family's land, and we buried him, mm -hmm. and we were all sort of there celebrating his life, and we had pictures, and you know, we were just hanging out and um, playing some music and whatever. And mm -hmm. then it was dusk, and we decided to go and, and visit the grave. Mm -hmm. Well, we went up there, and right as the sun was setting, a cool breeze, like you said, sort of mm -hmm. started blowing in. Yeah. And we were like, okay, well, we better go in. You know, something's blowing in. Yeah. So we started, we started, we turned around and started walking down the hill. Well, right at that moment, the horses started just running all around, bucking and going crazy. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what's, what's going on then? And all the other animals, they just started mm -hmm. howling. They were howling and howling and howling. Yeah, the storm, the storm yeah. Had to come in and they, they Yeah, crazy, and, yeah. And, and so we were like, wow. And just then I turned around and looked up on the hill where we had buried him, and some fog had kind of blown into that area and, and then there I, I could just see his figure oh, just cool. coming out of the fog yeah. with some other figures and stuff yeah. and it was I mean this gives me chills just thinking about it but yeah. that happened right when we were starting our band and we wanted to carry Ice's his name was Ice his 
spirit with us. Mm -hmm. And since then, several of our other animals have passed away, including Winter, who toured with us mm -hmm. for the first four years of our band. So yeah. he's with the Ghost Wolf Pack, and we carry his, his spirit with us mm -hmm. today in our music. He buried him in a band vest, too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so he had my other, I had two of these vests with the patches on, and yeah. he got the other one. So that is he was in the band till his return. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And we, we uh, wrote a song for him, Journey On, and hmm. um, yeah, we were just really close with our animals. Yeah. That's just a way, to, a way to have them with us always. Yeah, yeah, they're important. You know, if you're watching, probably like, wow, it's, it's important to have that sort of attachment. So I love it. Yeah. Like, that's like that inspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I um I tried to come up with just names for music firsthand for a long time and I was like there was I thought, okay, I'm just gonna just go out to the desert for a while and I was out there for like days and days and days and I got lost and kind of disoriented and it was like this big mirage hit me and it was like music firsthand, that was it. That's how yeah. I came up with it. The big finger. Just kidding. So um <laughs> your dad raises uh wolf pups. What's the what's the story behind raising wolf pups? Um he he grew up raising Great Danes and training Great Danes um, mm -hmm. since he was a little boy, going to um, dog shows and also as a cowboy training and riding horses and everything. He's been an animal person. Mm -hmm. Well, when he was sort of in between dogs at, you know, at some point, he came across a wolf hybrid that he did at home. Mm -hmm. And so he thought, well, you know, I'm used to big animals and, and yeah. dogs and I can... I'll take him in and stuff. And once he took one in, the word kind of got out. And this was in the hill country. Mm -hmm. If you have a wolf dog that is problematic or yeah. needs a home or whatever, this is the guy to call. Mm -hmm. So he started getting these calls. And I remember as a kid going with him. And there would be an animal just so wound up in a cage that anybody, everybody was too afraid to go in and even feed it. They'd have to throw the, the food over wow. the fence and stuff because... It just mm -hmm. didn't. It wasn't getting the proper care, mm -hmm. and my dad would just go in there and, and just take it. Wow. And, and you know, take it, take it home. Yeah. And then after a while, just raising the the rescues, he wanted to continue the bloodline, and he sort of selectively bred every six years to um, sort of have his own mm -hmm. breed. Okay. So, um, so that's what he did, and now, I mean. Unfortunately, we're down to three because oh, really? we've had so many die off of old age and stuff, and we don't have a breeding yeah. pair right now. So. How many did you have? What's the largest you've had on time? Well, eight adults, okay. but then if if we did have puppies at some point in there, yeah. along with those, it, it would maybe double. Wow. So it's been a lot of animals. Yeah, well, the photos are great, too. I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. They're, they're really are. special. They're really, really special animals. They're so smart, so devoted. And, uh, but they do take a lot of work. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not just a, an animal that any, anybody can handle. It yeah. takes a lot of dedication. Yeah, that's like, yeah, full time job. Full time. Right? And he's retired, yeah. so he yeah. can spend the time that is needed. But his ones now are more, pretty much more like dogs now. Yeah. Because they've been bred down so long, like 30 years of that gene, you know? Mm -hmm. and so they're, yeah, they, they hand raised. they're northern looking animals, and yeah. they can like play that part, but they're really just big puppies. Oh, yeah, okay. they're so not they're aggressive not, at all. They stay out and, yeah. He even, hired, he even gets hired to do film work for, with them oh. because they look like uh, scary yeah. you know, animals, but they're actually, they're, they're just soft angels. It's like Game of Thrones, right? It's the, exactly. Like, the, the, the yeah. Big wolf dog in there that yeah. they're really scared of. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you have the wolf mask, now it's the theme, you take it to all the shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was a gift. And um, now it's been around the world like five really? times. Oh yeah. yeah. She goes everywhere. This is our grandma, White Lily. Grandma White Lily. Mm -hmm. I like it. And she's a uh, little dirty now, but she's but road, the, road one. But that's supposed to be the whole theme, right? And, and I so I, I love it. I love the, the theme and the, and the mask. And so I, I do have like a question. So I've been practicing guitar for like a probably a year now, and I am almost ready to go on tour. And I, I really want to open for the Ghost Wolves. That's my whole, it's kind of a dream of mine. So um, I would love to open for you guys if, if I can, if you guys are okay with this. But, um, and I th but I think you know, part of what I want to remind you is the band name and make sure you guys are cool with kind of what I want to do, right? So if you guys are cool with this, yeah. Cool. My 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 plan is what I I, I oh, want to do. Oh oh wow. Yeah. 
is um, I, I'm thinking that we call ourselves the Ghost Babies, and we open for you guys. Ghost totally babies. cool, Ghost Babies, yeah. uh, right next to Grandma. And um, what do you think? Just, we can roll with that. I think you uh, maybe you can call our hotline. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the hotline operator return your call. <laughs> we, will, we will broaden your audience. We're going to be bigger because then we're going to play softer music. Yeah, right babies. Bushy. Get our baby audience for us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, under five. Under five. Babies, under five. So <laughs> we started young. We have the grandmas that come out to see us, but we're, okay. we're missing a whole demographic. We really are. We're going to do okay. Yeah, it's good work. It's good work. Under, underage. I'm totally in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're ready. I mean, and most of my, my quality of my music kind of appeals to, to babies. Okay. Like, kind of cool. do a few chords. All right, cool. We're going to with the ghost baby. We're going to open it up next time on tour. Love it. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Let's hear another song. Now that, with, now we got the ghost babies ready to roll. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to play? Um, let's see. Do you like I told you? You can do as I told you. Do as I told you. Okay, let's do it. As I told. <laughs> Really like touring over 
because we can shower every day. Yeah, we should do more of that here, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really, really nice. Some I mean, people do it in the States, but some people, but most people don't. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's not, kind of a common there's thing. like a spoken or an unspoken law. Like, that's just what they do. And then we don't have that here. I love it. So. I wonder if it goes back to like travelers, you know, way mm -hmm. back when in Europe, people that just travel around and they're always, they always take care of people. And yeah. They're in your home. Yeah. We're just such a young country. It's just not. I think it's true. Nothing. Yeah, I think you're right. Guess, we'll just go from country to country. And, you know, yeah. maybe a little bit to that just because think about when, whenever we all travel overseas and you have someone from another country or they come here, I find people more hospitable to somebody from another country coming here. So yeah. it's like, oh. Right, because and that's so close. Yeah. Sure. yeah, so that probably happens. Yeah, yeah. it does. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so a lot of you that are online uh, listening or watching right now or, or watching, watching recording, like, if the ghost wolves come to your town, invite them to stay at your place and crash because I don't want Johnny not showering for a yeah. week. Neither do I. <laughs> you don't want this in your house. Uh-uh. Remember I talked about all those socks and underwear? No. Let's talk about your socks for a minute. Uh, no. All right. They showed up in the house tonight and they're like, what about the laundry basket? I'm like, are you playing the laundry tonight? I'm like, no, 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 we need to use laundry. Just, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, on tour, somebody offering you a place to do laundry, yeah. that's gold. Oh. It's like striking gold. Like, Currency. Yes. Like clothes. Hashtag laundry for musicians. Because <laughs> there's never time on tour, you know? It's just you're always moving, so. That's really good. I like that. Yeah, but yeah. clean clothes. Good thinking. Yeah. Um, awesome. A question that came up last week we interviewed Carson McCover. Were you guys familiar with Carson yeah, McCover? Great. Right? Great country artist. We had her on the show last week, and I think this might be a theme, but you guys have a great song called Wetting My Knife, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's a theme now. So the question I asked her, which a lot of folks who were watching online love this question, so I'm going to ask you guys to, if, if you were to kill somebody in the most hilarious way possible, how would you kill them? I would lock them in our van with my laundry basket full of dirty underwear and socks until they suffocate from exposure to that. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be hot outside. That's pretty good. It's just the smell. That's it. I'm already Is that cool? I'm starting to get, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. That's good, that's yeah. good. I would probably have to deep freeze them. You know, first, lock them in the deep freezer, and then, you know, so it's a slow, you know, oh. and then, but then <laughs> toss them up on the chopping block of the mat and feed them to the animals. Because cool. she's done that before. That's, you know, to a deer. That's very far ago. Well, uh, I didn't put them in the deep freeze. We well, didn't kill the deer, but yeah. we would get deer sometimes and feed them to their dogs out in the hill country. Yeah, because oh. there's a deer processor that, um, I mean, they just throw away all of the, the legs and the the scraps and stuff, and we said, hey, we have animals that would eat that. Oh, They're like, true. hey, come and take it. And they wouldn't so, know the difference if it was a human. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's so close. So, so it's just, that's yeah, my it's plan. Just I mean, that's my plan. So <laughs> don't mess with me because I got a plan. You get, and it's hilarious. Like, that's so <laughs> fun. That's a good way to go. Yeah. Let's record executives. Don't call me back. Oh, I like We're it. We're going to be wondering what happened then. Let's drop a few questions. Talking to you, Talking Sony. Talking to you, Sony. That's right. You know, you know who you are. You better, watch, nice. you better watch out for your puppy chow. <laughs> this has turned into a Fargo episode, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 episode, I saw that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, you guys are married. And so, are the story we? of how you... Are I don't we? know, there's a lot of underwear involved here. Maybe not for all. <laughs> Maybe the show. It may not be. So. <laughs> <laughs> So the story behind how you met, um, that's something I haven't read a lot about, I haven't seen oh, yeah. much of that. So how you met, and what's the story behind that? Well, we met at a music festival, at Kerbal Folk Festival. At the time, he was playing in a gypsy jazz Americana band, and I was doing sound. Yeah. I had a friend in, in the band. They had moved from New Orleans. Okay. But the fiddle player, Phoebe Hunt, was in, was in the band, and I, I knew her because she was an awesome mm -hmm. So that's how we met, and we started playing music together. Um, his first gig with me, it was a um, Day of the Dead mm -hmm. remembrance of Ella Fitzgerald okay. and celebration of her. And he he almost got fired before he because he couldn't find where it was. Yeah. It was out in the country. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. At Ball Farm. He almost didn't make it. Uh, he almost didn't make it, and uh, we wouldn't be here right now if that was the case, probably. We'd be somewhere else. We'd be puppy chow. But. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, so then, so we were in separate bands. 
playing um, music together when we could, but touring separately constantly. And then finally, we were just like, why don't we just make our own band? And that way, we don't always have to be a bar. Yeah. And that's when we decided yeah, to plug yeah. in. And um, I started getting like half stacks and stuff. And just because we were both in yeah. sort of more precious music a little bit before. And we were just like, put that behind us and mm -hmm. try to bring some, some mm -hmm. raw energy. You know? Love it. To the music, so, so some final, some, yes, final yeah. stuff, and and then now, but now we're back to doing a uh, different thing. And, well, we still do the electric, but yeah, yeah, yeah. change it up. Absolutely, yeah, keep it fresh. And and so then along the, the journey, um, obviously you guys are getting much bigger, and you just released an album, right? Is this the third album? It is. Yeah. The third album. And so it's tell us a little about the album. It's the second full length. But it's yeah. the third vinyl. Mm -hmm. Our first EP with six live tracks is, is um, on a vinyl. And okay. then we have our first uh, full length, Man, Woman, Beast. And then this is our second full length, Texas Platinum. Yep. And we recorded it with Mike McCarthy when he still had a studio here in town. Okay. He lives in Nashville now. But okay. It was really fun working with him. And we got 17 tracks, um, but that's 13 songs and, and three other tracks of different Okay. And what's different about this album maybe than the last album? Because I think you, you start to build up a fan following. And, mm. and and you go on tour and you have to play the same songs mm. over and over. So I know you have to think about how do we change this up without losing a fan base, gaining new fans. How does that happen? Well, I guess we didn't really think about that. I don't that. think about it. No, we, we just, just play what we want to play. We write what we want to write. Yeah, and we, we don't just have try to do it the best we can. Right. And if people like it, that's great. If they hate it. That's fine too. Good for you. They can suck on an egg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can drink a cuvee black and blue. <laughs> they can stuck in your van for days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, no, but really, I mean, we're we're just evolving how we think we should be evolving, and we're playing what we feel like playing, and that's why we have this band because before we were playing other people's bands and we were being told how to play. Yeah. And that's fine. It's a great way to learn how to play your instrument, and I want to knock it. I think everybody should do it if they want to be a musician. But yeah. at a certain point, you just kind of want to do your own thing. So now I get yelled at by her instead of other people. <laughs> I'm good at it though. I, I yell at him real good. Nice. Just keep yelling. <laughs> <laughs> you put on the mask when you do the yelling. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's good. We're not gonna get into where that goes. It's very scary. <laughs> very scary. And then, yeah, I'm already afraid. <laughs> I know, I can see it. In your face. Yeah, I've got multiple ways to die for this show. Uh, and then you worked on a book called Seduced by Sound. Yes. That what took you into that and down that path, right? Because it's incredibly supportive of the Austin music uh, scene, Thank but not exactly tied to the ghost world. So what what was that? Yeah, no, not at all. Well, I've always been into documentation, mm -hmm. and um, that's I studied sound recording and school and just I've always been fascinated with documenting what's happening right now. Yeah. That's why I love recording music and everything but I just thought it would be a really cool project and when I met Kim Borsuch from Weba, mm. she had this idea of um, honoring your muse and having mm. musicians talk about nice. who they were influenced by. Yeah. And I was like, oh well, how cool would it be to um, combine ideas and, and do sort of an anthology of what's happening in Austin right now in the music mm -hmm. scene and get as many people involved as we can just talking about their muse mm -hmm. and, um, and why they do what they do. Yeah. So it was a lot of work yeah. because <laughs> musicians are a little bit hard to get to do something. Yep. You know? <laughs> it's like, answer these questions, you know, it's really easy. <laughs> and their platform, you just create an, an account, you know, you get an invite, you log in, you yeah. can go back to it, you can edit it, you know, and then you submit it, and, and that's all you have to do. Yeah. But, there was a struggle, it was like yeah. one teeth, but finally I got over 100 people to participate, yeah. and we got a, a good spread of the awesome music scene. Yeah. Different genres and different, um, different styles and a lot of different uh, influences. Yeah. And, and then we picked the top five muses across everybody hmm. and we got everybody to sign the book to those people wow. and we, we sent it off and so I haven't heard back whether or not they got it or anything but hopefully they did. But what a great project. Yeah it was great and then the book also comes with 50 
downloadable tracks. Oh, wow. So you Didn't can listen that. to the music, you can read about where it comes from, and how everybody's kind of connected in the scene. And um, people can get it by just going to seducedbysound.com. Mm -hmm. So go to Seduced by Sound. It's a great gift, actually. Like it's, yeah. it's like a coffee table perfect gift to give somebody who loves the Austin music scene, who also, also just loves to see like up-and-coming musicians. Yeah, it's a great discovery tool. There yeah. are some very well-established um, Austin artists, as well as a lot of uh, people that you may not know. Right. And you can listen to their music and read about their music and go check them out. Yeah. So it's, it's good exposure, and um, yeah, you can also get it at Book People. Yeah. Um, so let's do one more song, and I just got a couple more questions before we wrap up. You guys okay with doing one more song? Okay, sure. Yeah. You want to do a How's the Lacking song? What do you want? Didn't we start with How's the Lacking? Yeah. Let's do that one. Don't live. You got it, boss. Dinner Who's the guy from Confederacy of Dunces? Yeah, that, that that's actually who I was thinking of. The main character in Confederacy of Dunces. I can't remember his name at the moment. He's a hot dog guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, the, the 
New Orleans. Yeah, he just seems like a trip. It's funny. Yeah. We both, we both, well, we both thought of the same. Well, I thought of him, and then he said it. He thought of the dude from Kentucky. Yes, that's the, first, that's the first. That's the first guy I thought of. I know. We're all you guys must be married. It's a lot of, a lot of time in this family. It is weird. That's that's weird. Weird. You're weird. All the books. I know. Is it the one book we've read? Here we go. Oh yeah, that book. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so, oh. Ooh, hey now. Hey, hey. You got the diaper. Yeah. So the uh, last question I have for you guys is it's just um, it, we as we have people folks that are watching in and we're gonna watch later. Um, you have, you have a great site with merch, right? And you guys have a really unique program, too, where you can have a subscription. Yes. So how does that work? Yes, well, we have a subscription service. Um, it's through Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. So you just sign up with your credit card, and then every month you, you choose your level. So, you know, I think it's like, it starts at, like, $6.66. Okay. And then it goes up, you know, and some people do 10 some people do 20 Yeah. But it's just a monthly. When you first do it, you get a whole catalog. Mm -hmm. And then we offer limited releases or um, anything new we have, it goes to them first. Yeah. Um, merch, anything like that, or like, okay, you know, you get it first, you want yeah. it, or we'll send stuff in the mail, postcards from Europe, or cool. new stickers, or um, we also were doing the monthly mystery, which was a, oh. um, a postcard of okay. art that, that I designed, and then on the back would be a download code of a demo or you know something mm. that we've been working on so we, we sort of got behind on that one but uh we were doing that for do that for i mean for, two for years. solid two years yeah, yeah. every month it was, a lot, a, piece, it was a lot of work a new piece of art corresponding to a song yeah and we got i mean it was great to to push to do that mm -hmm. every month but um sort of got a little bit too busy to keep that sure. going um but I, I do plan to bring it back at least in some some way, maybe not every month, but. Well, that's the part that makes especially in the connection. So, so people could go to theghostwolf.com yes. and they could sign up for the subscription yes. for those, like 10 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. They get special access, they get the stuff you talked about. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And get then mail. also, yeah, you get mail, mail. Yeah, it's really great. fun. Yeah, yeah. And then if we come to your town, we can do meet and greets. And, yeah. You know, we, we love our subscribers, we call them our baby fangs. Yeah. And yeah. we are so thankful for them because it really does help us just yep. every month, just that extra little push to help yeah. us keep going. So yeah. be a baby fang. You all should be baby yes. fangs. Please. 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 I want to be a baby fang. Don't be a baby diaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be a baby fang. Another right. fictional character that I'd like to go to um, dinner with it would be Grandma. Oh, there you go. The white lily. I love it. She's got a lot of stories, so, yeah. <laughs> you, want, you want to share some of those, maybe a hint of what you think those stories might be? Well, a real grandma wore that mask in Wisconsin this weekend. Three. Or Three, no, two. two. And one grandpa. She, Whoa. she would call in our shows, because they're a pretty good crowd. She would be like, is there a grandma in the audience? And then some lady in the back would be like this. And then we'd bring her up on stage, and everyone would cheer for her. And yeah, we had a song, Grandma's a Rebel or Raised yes. by the Devil. So she would put the mask on, and dance around and everybody would be screaming Grandma's a Rebel Raised by the Bell. And that was her moment to shine. That is great. And on the, the last show, it was a big outdoor stage and there was a mini chopper motorcycle on stage with Whoa. us. And um, I had her get on that with the, the mask. You know, a random grandma that yeah. volunteered and there she was on the chopper, on stage, this big stage, with the mask on, just like, <laughs> like this, but the, like, super loud, you were like, excessively crowd. loud, just being like, so loud. Wait, I was a rebel, <laughs> the devil, and she's just like, yeah, <laughs> it was really awesome. cool, people loved it, it's like, everybody loves grandmas, yeah, okay. yeah. I love you gotta my love grandmas. your grandma, it's all about the grandma, so when I open for you guys, do you think I get a grandma to wear a diaper? Like, grandma's a baby. <laughs> yeah, what was it? Grandma's a baby. Raised by a scaby. Raised by a scaby. Raised by a scaby. That's going to be our new theme song. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we already have another uh, friend of ours, Solid State, up in Minneapolis. They, they, um, their joke song is, Grandma's a no, grandpa, grandpa a stranger, ranger. raised by a ranger. Well, I thought grandpa's a stranger, raised by a ranger. <laughs> Maybe it's a ranger raised by a stranger. Oh, solid state. Let's tag solid state. Solid state. Solid what state. up, boys? Double Dutch water. Nah, he's on it. They were, um, they were solid. 
as well in the crowd this weekend because I was able to like crowd surf on them. Oh, like, they were cool. right in front, so I could jump and then from there, they, you know, they, they were there. Ah, that's so awesome. Good guys. Good so guys. thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. I know they might have. Happen. Should probably tag brother or brother too, because yeah. those guys were also in the front row. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They were also helping us out. Yeah, brother or brother. Yeah, they're from Indianapolis. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so All right. it was fun. This festival up in Wisconsin and kind of brings bands that we've played with in oh, Ohio yeah. and Indiana and, yep. and Minneapolis and brought everyone together. So it's like a big family reunion. Oh, so. nice. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys have been on the road since probably for a long time. It's nice to see like the familiar faces, familiar bands. Yeah. And, 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 and it's you, anytime really you get a grandma on a wolf mask on a motorcycle. It's I mean, what kind of show is that, right? It's you can't stop the it. best. Unstoppable. Ever. Unstoppable. Yeah, now I need one of those little mini choppers at every show. Yes. We need a grandma to come with us on the road. That too. Oh, that's true. It'd be yeah. like National Lampoons. Yeah. Uh huh. Be yeah. our road manager slash. Grandma. Yes. <laughs> you out there? You out there, anybody? Slash Van. Jet. Jet's a grandma. Oh, that's true. She'd probably do it. Okay. My Aunt Jet. Aunt Jet, tag her. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming on the show tonight. Thanks I mean, this for is having us. fantastic. It's been a lot of fun. We're really fortunate to have you here. Okay. Um, go to our email, just info at theghostwolves.com, yeah, right? If you want to book. Wolves. Absolutely. Do that right away. Uh, let me thank uh, Maddie Priest has been running social tonight. She's been fantastic volunteering her time. Um, the fantastic, unbelievably great sound engineer, Benjamin Allen Levy. Follow him. Um, and if you have sound needs, book, book Ben, because um, we're all volunteering our time here tonight. And I have to thank uh, my incredible wife, Claudia uh, Kulaga. She's made us dinner. We're going to have some nice dinner. And, and she just allows me to bring great artists here into the, our home every week. So thank you all. Follow us on Music First Hand. We have an app launching uh, in the next couple weeks with beta, so you can actually book artists very, very easily with our, with our new app. Um, I hope you'll check it out, but um, that's not really the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to bring great artists to you every week. Next week, Fair City Fire is going to be here. There's going to be a hell of a lot of yelling when we have them in the room. Um, and then we close the week on a quieter note with uh, Jake Farr, who has a bit of a Leonard Cohen sound. I think you'll enjoy that. So thank you all for tuning in. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And good night. Everybody have a uh, wonderful evening. Good night. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah.